I'm Simin and I'm coming from Vienna, Univers Vienna University of Technology. And uh, today I'm going to talk about our paper, SOC paper, regarding the classification of privacy preserving techniques uh, proposed for Bitcoin. And uh, we tried uh, to present the limitations of those techniques and also highlighted some challenges for future research. And as you know, in, block, in Bitcoin transactions, the transaction amount is written in the clear. So the first issue would be clear amount. And another issue would be traceability, as in the UTXO-based blockchain uh, that ha have multiple uh, inputs. There is an assumption that all the inputs are controlled by the same user and this it, this assumption is true as it is unlikely that different users jointly create a transaction. And this heuristic uh, perfectly works uh, to clear clusters and de-anonymize Bitcoin addresses. So the second issue would be traceability. And another significant concern in the Bitcoin privacy is linkability, which refers to ability to connect different transactions when the same address is reused, as whenever an address is reused, it relays the transaction to all the previous transactions that appeared in the blockchain. So, uh, lots of privacy preserving techniques have been proposed to provide better privacy for Bitcoin transactions. And uh, we try to evaluate them based on different criteria, privacy, security, and efficiency. For privacy, we evaluate them, evaluated them based on unlinkability, on traceability, and transaction value privacy. And for security, we evaluate them uh, if they are theft resistance, dodge resistance, and civil resistance. And for efficiency, uh, we looked at uh, those uh, protocol to see if they need interactions between input users or if they need interaction with the recipient, if they are Bitcoin compatible or if they need extra delays, extra fees and so on. So it's, uh, the slide shows our research methodology for systematization of the knowledge. We first defined the research questions and then uh, we search on the scientific databases with the keywords. And then we, in total, we obtained 869 papers and then we dropped our related papers ba based on titles and abstracts. And then uh, we evaluated 21 privacy protocol in our papers. So we categorized uh, these privacy techniques into centralized mixers, conjoint based transactions, atomic swap transactions, and threshold signatures. And I'm going to explain the basic ideas of these categories in the next slide. Excuse me, can I ask a question? Can we have the slides later on? Yes, sure. So the mixing idea was initially proposed by Chom in 1981, and then similar techniques have been similar techniques have been uh, employed to enhance privacy in the blockchain. And centralized mixers, such as mixing websites, are one of the options. And with the centralized mixers. The users, join, the users actually send their coins to a mixer in equal amount, and then mixer shuffles their recipient addresses and then forwards the coin to the recipient ad address. Looking at the blockchain, uh, one cannot distinguish to which output Alice sent her uh, inputs, actually. So the second... Uh, Category is conjoint transaction, and in conjoint, users jointly create the transaction. Here, Alice and Bob jointly create the transaction, uh, but they should spend uh, in equal sized uh, amount, as there is no way to distinguish to which equal sized output the input is related. So they they can also provide their change addresses to uh, receive the change, and 
The third uh, category would be coin swap, and in coin swap, users, uh, uh, for instance, here Alice pays to Bob via intermediary Carol, uh, but it requires four transactions in total: two for payments, these multi-signature transactions, and two uh, hash lock transactions. And uh, the payment would be by these multi-signature transactions. Both users sh should provide their signatures. In case of cheating, uh, the users are able to unlock the coins via these hash lock transactions by providing the pre-image of the hash. And the last category is threshold signatures. Threshold signatures. Uh, actually use joint signature, which can be signed by a specific threshold of users. And how can we use this for enhancing our privacy? Uh, here, all the users first create the address J in a threshold basis. They forward the coin to address J, and then they create another transaction, transaction two, and uh, forward the coin to their desired destination addresses. So we evaluated these techniques um, based on privacy criteria. For unlinkability, as you can see, only value shuffle proposed something, and it was using the stealth addresses. That uh, when we had these stealth addresses in dark wallet for Bitcoin in, in the earlier stage, Monero uses this addresses, and the good news is that it increased attention, and now uh, Ethereum proposed a, and it's a standard for using stealth addresses in their blockchain. For untraceability, actually, all the techniques try to provide solutions for uh, uh, this uh, criteria, as it, it is so important for the first heuristic, the common input ownership. But those who are in the yellow one ha have internal traceability, which means that uh, the participant in the transaction can link inputs to outputs. However, it should be mentioned that if the protocol is internally traceable, it, it is still provides privacy against blockchain analysis. And the last one is transaction amount privacy. And for this value shuffling, uh, again, propose using confidential transactions. And they investigated if it is possible to use confidential transactions in Bitcoin. Um, however, it requires soft work for, for Bitcoin. And for those who are in the yellow one, they propose some solutions to hide the um, true payment amount, for instance, in pay join, which is creating a coin joint transaction with the recipient. And then the recipient would add up the payment, so the, pay, the true payment would be hidden from the blockchain analysis. And for security, for being theft resistant, it should be mentioned that it's so it's so it's really important for a protocol to be uh, theft resistant. And if we want to enhance our privacy, we should be sure that no one in the protocol can steal our coins. But the problem with the centralized mixing is that you can forward the coins to the mixer, and the mixer never sends the coins to the recipient. So you will lose your coins. And for threshold signatures, the problem is that uh, the majority of users should behave honestly. And as otherwise, you lock the coins to address, but then you cannot unlock them as the majority should come and sign the transaction. And for civil, uh, being civil resistance, uh, let's say that the techniques that have this, uh, cr um, this criteria, they just proposed upfront fees to prevent uh, civil attacks. And then for the e efficiency, we had uh, more criteria I refer to our paper. But uh, here you can see, for instance, for some of the protocols, you need interaction with recipients. And if recipient, uh, uh, for instance, for conjoint protocol that cannot actually provide this feature, the problem is that you need the users for input registration and for signing. 
So they, are, they need interaction with the input, and some of them also need interaction with the recipient, which is quite tough. And then some of them are not Bitcoin compatible. They require software. So, uh, and the problem is that uh, most coin join based and threshold signatures uh, do not offer directly sent to the recipient. You should first send your coins to, to an address and then create another transaction to send the mixed coin to the recipient, which means extra delays, extra transaction fees. And here you can see the implementation in practice. Most of them are a centralized mixer, but funnily enough, if you search on the net now, it, it's it, the paper published, uh, the paper prepared in 2020. But now if you search on the net for decentralized mixer, some of them are out of service. Some of them have been seized by, by the US laws. And then for other techniques, uh, the majority of uh, the most commonly used technique is coin joint transaction. Dark wallet and shared coin discontinued, but we, we still have these three wallets, join market, wasabi, and samurai wallet. And pay join uh, also uh, proposed by BTC Pay. You can create your uh, store that accepts pay join transaction. And then we see three main challenges for future research. First would be law enforcement. As uh, governments actually may ban some, some of the privacy preserving techniques, we have seen that in privacy coins. We also um, saw that uh, the banning of uh, Tornado Cash for Ethereum mixing service and the other centralized mixers. And it is unresolved challenge in privacy technology that uh, we provide privacy for uh, privacy aware users, but we prevent uh, the technology being misused by criminals. So we would uh, suggest uh, for the future research to analyze privacy pre preserving techniques destinations with grant rules to see if they are really used by criminal activities or if they are really used by users who are, who are aware of these privacy issues. And here is an example of the website that has been seized uh, by the US law enforcement. It was chipmixer.com, but now they they have been seized. And then another problem would be practicality. Uh, some of the privacy preserving techniques are distinguishable uh, in the blockchain. Uh, for instance, coin join transactions. Here, if you go to blockstream.com and search for one of the coin join transactions, it flagged the transaction as coin join. So if someone uses coin join for, to enhance their privacy, they are flagged by monitoring tools. And the problem would be some exchanges do not accept the coins coming from coin joint transactions. So you may have some problems using these techniques. I have a quick question. How is it possible to see that transaction has come from coin joint? Actually, they all have, uh, they all have the equal sized output here. And then whenever they, the, the transaction has equal sized output, they flag them as coin join transaction. And last but not least is usability. And if we offer privacy as layer two solution, then we expect user to educate themselves with complicated features of the layer two solutions, wallets and so on. And we should, investigate, uh, would users trust third party services to enhance their privacy? Would users really pay extra fees and delays uh, for their privacy? And uh, the future research can shed light uh, if uh, the, actually the understanding of users between privacy obtained from layer one and also layer two solutions. And that brings me to the end of my presentation and thanks for joining.